you're like me and grew up without cable, you probably watched a lot of PBS kids shows. And one of my favorites growing up was Zoom. Now, for those unfamiliar with Zoom, I'll fill you in. Basically, kids wrote in from across the country with ideas for plays, stories, jokes, recipes, games, science experiments, and then the presenters of the show would take those suggestions. The presenters were seven real kids from Boston. And watching that show as a six or seven year old, my dream was to move to Boston and become a Zoomer, and then basically my life would be complete. But there are a lot of segments from Zoom that I still remember. Like, I remember one time they tried to figure out how many dots there were on a basketball. We also tried a few of the recipes. They did an ice cream recipe once, and I think my cousins and I made it. But the thing I remember most about Zoom is Fanny Dooley. For those unfamiliar, Fanny Dooley was a reoccurring puzzle. Fanny Dooley was a woman who liked apples but not fruit. She liked soccer but not sports, sweets but not candy. She was inscrutable until you figured out that all her likes and dislikes could be explained by one simple rule. And the struggle to understand Fanny Dooley is the struggle of growing up. Okay, let me explain. So, as a six or seven year old, you start watching Zoom and you don't understand Fanny Dooley, but your parents do, and then adulthood starts to feel like this secret society of Fanny Dooley understanders with information about the world you're woefully left out of. But you get a little older, and all of a sudden something clicks in your head and you do understand Fanny Dooley. And you're all excited to share your newfound knowledge about how Fanny Dooley likes pizza but not Italian food until it dawns on you that Fanny Dooley pees and poops like the rest of us, but doesn't use the toilet. And that kind of grosses you out until you realize maybe Fanny Dooley lives in the wilderness. And this is exciting to you because now you're a teenager and you're entering the wilderness of your own sexual awakening when you think, wait, Fanny Dooley likes boobs, but doesn't like breasts. Why do you think that is? And you figure, well, she's queer but not lesbian, and that strikes you as being really progressive. Until you realize that she likes marriage, but not dating. And now you're an adult, and you realize that Fanny Dooley, like you, contains multitudes, although she would disagree and tell you she contains cells and stuff. You also realize that you've single-handedly ruined Zoom for a generation of viewers, and it's time to crawl back into your cave now and go away.